Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's world and tech news leading towards the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. <laughs> I'm Nathan Waters. This is High 45. Okay, we've had a couple of failed I mean, beginnings there. I was going to stop it there, but that'll work. That yeah, will work. So what have you got this week? Oh, wait, we should quickly mention what's happened in Australia lately. True. We've got a hung parliament. That's kind of cool. It's, it's pretty really crazy. Big. Although the problem is, it's a hung parliament and it's kind of the difference between one gigabit's national broadband network, mm-hmm. like fibre to home, and the other party is offering 12 megabits, you know, baseline wireless. Mm-hmm. So it might get up to 100 megabits depending on how close you are to these towers they're building. So... It's, it's looking very Why? interesting, especially for the future of Australia. Why? We need this f***ing fibre to home. God damn it. And there's these three independents that are deciding it. So that'll be interesting. Anyway. Yeah. Tuning into the Australia news is uh, yeah. it's quite good at the moment. We've got a lot of interesting topics. It's crazy and frustrating and crazy. Do you also relate to anything of that or what have you got this week? No, I don't relate at all. Um, yeah. Irish scanners um, create the most <laughs> secure, <laughs> secure city in the world. Welcome, big brother. That's cool. What do you got? Uh, I've got uh, Alien Hunters Should Look for Artificial Intelligence, which is also our singularity topic. Sweet. Uh, Google Prediction API, which links into our last recommendation engine uh, subject. That's episode. cool. Yeah. And uh, I've got a blog post by Leah Laporte saying about why he's giving up social media and why he doesn't actually find it effective. I like his flowered background. Oh, it's very pretty. <laughs> very pretty. Cool. Well, uh, why don't you start off? Kicking off this week. Uh, this is a Fast Company article about there is a firm called Biometrics R&D firm, uh, Global Rainmakers Inc. They're actually they're rolling out Irish scanning technology to uh, one of the largest cities in Mexico mm-hmm. with a population of more than a million. So they're basically going to put these they call them uh, just yeah just Irish eye scanning technology into right. into the city to monitor to help with law enforcement obviously. Well, so what what are they doing with them? Like, uh, what what what's the basic idea? Like, they've got they can read they can measure your iris. Is that right? Like, they identify you based on your iris. Pretty much, they take pictures of your iris and then just I guess collaborate them with a um, database. That's kind of cool. And <laughs> it, it's Minority Report. It's literally it Minority is. Report. Uh, well, it says, raises a lot of issues, but I mean, to actually mass roll it out is kind of effective. I mean, it must work pretty well. well yeah, it's just for the law enforcement mm. stuff. But um, there's a thing here saying that their their H-box can actually snap 50 people per minute in motion as they're walking through. Jesus. Like, oh, so yeah, for an airport. What, what do you mean walking well, through? Well, they've got, they got different versions. they got one, like they got really small ones, which are like portable, and I'm guessing they can just put on posts or whatever. Oh, okay. But they're this, the fastest one is like an airport security thing where you literally, you walk like through. Like a metal detector. It, yeah. And it snaps your eye. It's, it's the minority port. That, that scene <laughs> where they walk through and yeah. Tom Cruise is just snapping yeah, everyone's they eyes. They know that it's you. That, we have that now. Wow. Which is pretty crazy, and they're cheap as well. Like they're saying that if I can find the dollar figures, um, he says I'll be about fifty between fifty and a hundred dollars each in the not too distant future. Wow, they'll sue me yeah that much, and so they'll just be everywhere, and yeah. That won't be cool. That will not be cool. <laughs> well, it's, it's not too bad. Like, when you look at it, like, I mean, obviously the privacy concerns Big Brother and stuff, but mm. what, what it means is that you can actually know who someone is definitely at any point. Like, they go through certain parts yeah, and stuff. It. Yeah. That, I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm very much of the uh, opinion that uh, all data is eventually going to be free. And, uh, well, if this actually became free, it could actually be kind of cool because you've got a yeah. definite login system and your eyes are in. Yeah. It's, oh, it's just one step up from the um, fingerprinting stuff. Yes, yeah, is... but it's automatic. True. But then, are we going to get I into mean, that? I potential for abuse. Hi. Yeah, are we going to get into the stage where we start transplanting people's eyes to actually escape yeah, true. persecution? Yeah. But anyway, it's a it's a cool sort of tech thing. Um, I, I, I do like where this goes just for the, into. the universal login that you, you enter any building or something and it just quickly scans your eyes. You don't, like, I mean, I think you could have that with the mobile. Yeah. That you, you walk in anywhere and you get the login stuff, but actually doing it with the eyes, you don't even need any of the well, tech a lot of, back and forth. Yeah, well, there's a lot of crate, like both our laptops now have webcams in them. Yeah, true. Like, it should identify. Literally, a, a little piece of software code can actually mm. give that iris scanning or eye tracking stuff. That's very true. They've been saying with like the tablets and all sorts of our, our mobile devices and everything, that's going to be massive in basically seeing where our attention lies yeah. and manipulating that. Actually watch where your eyes like go. Advertising and game points. and That's kind of cool, really. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to watch. <laughs> uh, 
Actually, yeah, whatever company actually works out the tracking of the eye on specific quadrants of the, well, it wouldn't be quadrants, specific uh, places on the monitor or wherever you're looking, is yep. going to make a bundle. Yeah, well, because they can consult and say, yeah, we can watch here, where here. you're going. Yeah, look, <laughs> they look here, this is it. Which is far more accurate than oh, anything else. I mean, like, you, you, you load up mouse page, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. That's great. Cool. What do you got? Uh, my one I'll talk about first is uh, Leo Laporte, which is a, a big uh, tech journalist, has uh, spoken about why he's quitting social media. And it's interesting, actually, that he uh, he had a problem with uh, Google Buzz, and uh, like he accidentally hit a button or something, and something happened, and he didn't actually transmit out any buzzes. And uh, this happened for about, uh, I think it was about for two weeks, and uh, no one realized and this is the thing that hit him, that no one realized that he wasn't there, even himself. And uh, it just made him realize that most of social media at the moment is really just a giant echo chamber with everyone else shouting, but no one listening. And uh, that's why he's really like, you know what, I'm just gonna go back to the blog, just go back to the other stuff where I get actual feedback right. back and forth. Because no, and this was the point that he brought up, which I think is actually rather interesting, um, is that no one missed him when he was gone. Aww. <laughs> yeah, and this guy's big. Like, I mean, he's one of the, the massive guys online. <laughs> yeah, and it, it does kind of relate to that. That I mean, I would say even with Twitter or any anything online, even blog posts and stuff, that you still want to get that that feedback, I guess. And like, he may have had a few there, but again, he well, is he just not tracking it? That that could be the issue. No, well, he did. But he's he, got a he's got a shit time. He's making at least a million bucks a month. Or, oh, ridiculously! Or, month, or maybe a month. Well, maybe. he had seventeen thousand uh, people following him on Buzz. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's one of the top. Because he used to be way back in the screencast days, like with Kevin Rose and all them, he used to be in that crowd. Hmm. And then he started up, yeah, Twit, and then there's now this massive Twit network, which is like a podcast, like yeah, massive, it's ridiculously big tech network. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, especially looking at all of the social media at the moment is very much like this. That I, I think there might, I think I like I've been saying this for a while that I think Twitter is. A little bit fatty and I don't think that yeah. people are getting the results that are predicted by it the same way as dig that I, I noticed going to so many different pages people have like a dig badge on there w yeah. with no actual benefit and I think that's gonna be the same with Twitter and I think this is I mean we've noticed this a lot from people like saying they're leaving Twitter and this is one of the really big names in the tech world leaving it saying that it's not effective I think we are gonna see a backlash against it and so, so that, that happens like you look back in the landscape, this happened all the time. Literally, a new hot start comes up, it gains momentum because all the tech leaders yeah. flock onto it, and then it the mainstream hits it, it becomes overloaded, overcrowded. Very they, true. they can't work out how to filter the information effectively, yeah. and so people get pissed off with it because it doesn't become effective, and then the tech leaders move, they yeah. leave, and then they find the next big They thing. find their new thing. It's yeah, like it, it, it gets regulated it's, back to its niche. It's a cycle. It, and the issue stems from people not being able to control massive amounts of information yet. Mm. This is why recommendation engines, I think, are so important. Because they filter out the overload, absolute overload of information down to the individual level. Well, I, I guess it comes down to um, like what, what you were saying, that everyone all at once needs the, you know, the big new thing to jump onto and stuff. And I think yeah. Twitter's been it for probably the past two years or so. And um, at this point, it's I think we're starting to see the cracks in it. That people are a bit like that. Well, it's not actually providing the returns that I thought. Yeah. Uh, where we just need to wait for the next big thing, like because it was Dig to begin with, and I mean everyone was like, oh my god, Dig can do so much stuff. But being an avid Dig user and like you yourself as well, yeah. like I mean it didn't work that way. You don't. No. You don't just chuck something onto your site and have people dig it. No. Well, I think I saw recent stats saying that um, in I think South America. Uh, Twitter's been going awesome. Oh, okay. Like they're being, they've got like sixty percent of the internet users in like some of those Latin countries are. That's kind of cool. Using, I think so. Yeah. So maybe it's still trying to find out. Well, find I, its it's niche. definitely got a niche. It definitely has, but I don't think it's like the be all and end all of social media. And I think this is the big key thing that needs to be worked out right now is the whole echo chamber thing that you're just shouting out there and not getting the feedback. Yeah. And I think especially as we get quite a bit more into the future and stuff, that that has to be that that's the problem we're facing right now. We've got people actually sharing their thoughts and everything out there. Yeah. We need the thought, well, as you were saying, recommendation yeah. engines to just put the thoughts like, out there so you get input from the user rather than just reading. Yeah, definitely. 
Hmm. I mean, and that needs to happen all across the web. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> well, see, Ed, that's what Twitter and Dig have done, is that they've, like, spread a little bit there. Like, Facebook, of course, is the massive one, like, putting their, you know, leave a comment here for other people and doing stuff that way. Yeah. But, yeah, to make it more social and your idea of, like, you know, the BBC homepage customised to exactly yeah. how you want. Well, so you can see the trend as it's gone through. This is relaying, again, way back to the, the re recommendation thing. It's just all about this. Um, you look through it, forums where, you know, they split them up into sub-forums and then mm. you had your little subsections. Dig was all about using the masses to essentially sort the content and filtering and then and Twitter and then, you know, Facebook and everyone. But they're mm. still using such primitive methods. Yeah, they, they haven't introduced the computer to it. They haven't introduced no. the, uh, the exponential growth, really. Yeah. The, uh, the technological aspect that where you can put a computer to it and as Moore's Law progresses, the service it, becomes better. Yeah. None of these are based on computers. And there is so, like, I want to actually sit, because I don't think there is any, I've got to look into it, but if there's any recommendation engine for Twitter, I want to sit down and actually look at Twitter, look at every single data point and try and mm. extrapolate as much as possible. Because you take one single piece of data anywhere, it tells a story, mm. I think. And that's what I kind of want to sit down and, like, work it out. I yeah. think it's a good idea. So, leading on from that, mm -hmm. Google, I'm not sure if we mentioned this last week. I don't, we maybe, may briefly. Not have, maybe briefly. Maybe briefly but they've released what they're calling the Google Prediction API, which is literally an API where um, it's a recommendation engine API, where it self-learns. It's an algorithm that, that learns and continu like continuously builds upon itself. So you put in, um, you have a set of data, you put it into this, it's a black box um, API, because obviously they want to keep the, the algorithm well, What do you secret. mean by black box? In other words, you don't know what's happening inside oh, okay. it. You give, you give Google your data, push it into this thing, it does its fancy magic and then spits out recommendations at the back end. That's cool. Because they're doing this on a business model. They're growing oh, this. Yeah. They, they want the intellectual property of this. But the brilliant thing of this is it spits out recommendations and then relearns um, somehow, I haven't played with it, but um, relearns to actually work out what worked and what didn't plugs that back in and the algorithm grows. It learns. See, that's amazing. Like you actually say what outputs you want increased. Yeah. Or what, like, click-through exactly. rate and stuff, yeah. or what you want going through there, and you say, I want this increase, yeah. these are all my inputs, and Google Black Box, give it to me. Yeah. And every time someone puts data in, I'm sure Google's keeping a copy. Oh, they have to. Copy that data, use that to grow the algorithm even, even more. Um, and they got, just uh, briefly here, There's uh, there are three basic commands. One, to upload a collection of data, another telling the service to learn what it can from it, and a third, to submit new data for the system to react to base to react to based on what it learned. So it is that, it's a fractal system. It's yeah. pumping in, pushing it out, just, yeah, what'd, you back through. what'd you learn, what'd you learn, what'd you learn, what'd you learn, what'd you learn. So glorious. this is... Absolutely glorious. Again, this is this is just showing, this the recommendation thing I think will be... This could huge. be a very interesting idea to actually use this Google API in a sort of like say Twitter model or Reddit model, dig model, yeah. something like that where you say that, look, we've got all these stories submitted, these are all my data, I want people to click on them, make it happen. Yeah. Here's my data, here's my test point. Yeah. Uh, work it out, make it Increase better. Increase it further that, and that's, further. That's pretty much what they're trying to work on. But the issue is that so many different data has so many different data points yeah. that they want to improve, it's difficult. Mm. And there's only like, they've said they've only got a few hundred um, developers actually have access to this at the moment. Yeah. So it's very close niche sort of thing. Oh, especially to begin with, like that is kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's I like I can see this going very, very far and being very big. Well, it, again, links into the. I think we mentioned it last week again. How Google doesn't want us to search it. It wants us. Yes. It wants Google to search us. In yeah. Sense. Yeah. Google Give actually us tells us what, what to do. Yeah. yeah. That they say us because one way thing. And yeah, you can't do that good. without a recommendation engine. Damn without straight. each human on this planet having a dynamic algorithm. Yes. Associated to them. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Let's stop. Sweet. Uh, 